Okay, so welcome to Mrs. Doyle's kitchen. And you're going to have to excuse the state of it at the minute. And I haven't got all the utensils that I would usually have, but we're in the middle of fitting a new one. Um, so everything's kind of upside down, packed in boxes, and we're working with the bare minimum at the minute. But we are managing to still pickle with lovely fresh beetroot that we picked. And by request, um, I'm showing you how I do it. Um, Digadooly, you did ask which one, which vinegar I use. I use Sarsons um, Distilled and Spiced Pickle and Vinegar. Um, this is my personal preference for beetroot. Um, I have tried the malt version and it's not as nice. It's that one. I mean, obviously, it's down to personal taste, but that one for me is definitely the best one. Um, so, some of the things you'll need um, ingredients to start with obviously, your beetroot, um, your pickle and vinegar, um, some sugar, salt, cracked black pepper. That's all the ingredients you need. Um, some of the pans you'll need you'll need a large pan to cook your beetroot, a pan to do your vinegar in and I also by personal preference use a steamer to heat and sterilize my jars. Um, depending on what you want to do as well whether you do when you beetroot whole or slicing I just use an egg slicer um, rather than stand there and try and cut it all you'll need um, a measuring cup half measuring cup and a teaspoon and I found this in Aldi the other day and it was quite invaluable because um, once everything's in the jar and everything's hot it, it's a great way to move your jars around um, you'll also want some labels and a pen and obviously a selection of jars that you're going to use um, the ones I'm going to use today are probably those two Sherwoods ones, that jam one and probably this one. Looking at how much beetroot we've got, that's probably more than enough. And if there's any spare, then I'll simply eat it fresh. So, the first thing you want to do is get your beetroot on your go. Um, always leave it good inch or so on the end of your stalks. I'm sure I've told you that before, but it just stops the beetroot bleeding out. Get some cold water in there. Right, so just while I'm waiting for the kettle to boil in, I just want to quickly talk about jars. Make sure your jars have had a really good wash, obviously, before you, you're going to use them. And make sure they're a jar that's going to make a really good seal. These ones with the potty lids are absolutely perfect. Because if you get everything right, what you're doing here, this will seal up and it will last for a month of Sundays in your, in your cupboard. So, these ones that are like coffee, these coffee ones with like plastic lids, they're just no good. Don't bother with it. So, right, so I've got my jars in the steamer. This one will be for me utensils. So, this and my. I'll use to pick the jars up out of there so they'll get steamed as well. Everything has to be sterilised, it's really important. Um, the jars will go on first. Um, it'll take about 10 minutes for this to start boiling. 
we'll get the steamer on next with the jars and then we'll, once the beetroot's done we'll move on to doing the vinegar right so that's the boiling water out the kettle into the steam now so we'll get the jars on and the lid up get them steam away I'll give that five minutes to really get up to temperature and then we'll turn the heat down to number four this is an electric hob um, this is starting to heat up nicely as well now it's been on for eight minutes um, so I reckon a few more minutes and that'll be boiling and then when it is we'll come back right there we go the beetroot's now boiling now so I'm just going to take the lid off careful because it's hot leave it to go I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes and I'm going to come and check them because they're not big beetroot but they're not small either so all right from boiling just give them a check every 15 minutes and then once they're uh, soft we'll get them drained we'll get the vinegar going and then by the time the vinegar's just about done they should be ready to touch and peel ready to go into the jars so we'll let that go and we'll come back in 15 minutes okay right, so let's give these a check i had to put the Lid back on a bit so just went completely off the boil. It's out the lid. Not quite. Put that back on. We'll give it another 20 minutes. And we'll come back and have another look. Let's give this one last check. That's it, they're good. So, what we're going to do is get the colander, drain them out in the colander in the sink. What we're going to do is we're going to move those there. enough so that we can actually handle them. Right, so while that's cool, we'll get the vinegar ready. Now, I reckon there's enough beetroot there for about the four jars, and uh, for four jars, about the size we've got, we want. Four cups of vinegar.
to peep through it until the sugar's dissolved. And then once the sugar's dissolved, then we want to bring it to the boil. Right now we need to get these things warmed up. Stir stir every now and again, just to keep checking the sugar. It's like we say, we want that sh sugar dissolved, and then once that's dissolved, we we'll want to bring it to a, a rolling boil, not full boil, but a rolling boil. So we'll give that a minute, and we'll come back. Okay, so that's only been a few minutes, and the sugar's already dissolved. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to the heat to five and we'll see if we'll get this under a boil now. You can see the heat's through quite quickly so we'll come back and have a look once it's boiling. Right so that's the vinegar just about on a roll now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to peel the beetroot. Um, it's Cool. It's still hot as you can see, it's still steaming, but it's cooled down enough so that it can be handled. So all I do is nip the top off, pinch the bottom off, and just rub the skin and it just falls off like so. Nip the top, nip the bottom, and just rub the skin and it just falls off. So we'll get all them peeled and we'll come. Right, so that's them peeled. So what I'm going to do now is get this lot of steam up. After a clean tea towel, just to cool a second. And what we're going to do is we're going to peel, slice, sorry, the beetroot using my egg slicer and this Using this just makes life so much easier and quicker. some of them food safe gloves so First 
job to do is to get your beetroot into your jars, clean hands, get them in, prepare for the jars because they're going to be hot. the jar like that half you can get that off. She needed to make a clean seal. Just check them. So now you need to get your vinegar in. Just a little in the hot vinegar. Just pour it over. Make sure everything's fully submerged. Then you get the vinegar up to the neck of the jar. Now being very careful. So you can hold it. Hold the jar. And get your lid on it. Nice and tight. side and doing it this way. pliers to move them to whichever bench I'm going to leave them on and what I always do is cut them with a tea towel and within the next half an hour you'll hear all the lids start popping so you know you've got a good seal everything's worked and there's your jarred beetroot just in case and there you go homemade jarred beetroot and don't forget once your jars have cooled down a bit to put your labels on I oh, was right what it is the date I've done it and then when I open the jar the date I've opened it okay that's a good habit to get into labels and just so you know it's always a good idea to leave your pickles for at least a couple of weeks before opening them that way they've had enough time to sit in the vinegar and they'll taste so much better. 
I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you enjoy your beetroot. See you next time on Mrs. Doyle's Garden.